At Gatun, the site where the Chagras would be dammed to form the lake, a foundation of solid rock had to be laid before building could even begin. Meanwhile, to keep the river from continually flooding the works at Culebra, a massive dike had to be put up at Gamboa. And then there was the cut itself. Excavation had so far managed to widen it by over 100 feet, but the immense task of digging down had barely begun. With Gothels in charge, the Culebra cut would become a round-the-clock operation, with as many as 6,000 men at work at any given time. If we arrive there now, I think the first thing would strike us would be the noise. There would be maybe 300 drills going. There would be 60 or 70 shovels, each with three or four trains. There were constant explosions. And all of this noise would reverberate off the walls, as well as the noise was immensely hot, up to as much as 120 degrees. Very soon, it became known as Hell's Gorge. And more than anything, it was incredibly dangerous. The Culebra Cut was the most challenging part to dig because you had to get down through so much earth that became so much mud when it rained, as it did almost nonstop for nine months out of the year. And there were just constant landslides. They'd hear this tooting of the whistles blaring out, and they'd know that something went wrong, a slide. So they had to use pick and shovels to dig them out. They knew that the next slide could come down on them too and bury them too. The mountain didn't want to be crushed the way they did it, and the mountain fought back. The slides came without warning again and again, wiping out months of work in an instant, twisting track and machinery beyond recognition, literally burying men alive. Nearly all the victims were West Indians. There were no safety guidelines. There was no labor guideline. Every day, men die. It was a regular situation. So now they have to bring in more men and more men and more men. Assigned to the most punishing and hazardous work in the cut, the West Indians were the ones on the ground, hauling lumber and ties, shoveling earth, laying the dynamite that was used to blast through the mountains. They have to drill these holes, you know, in the rock. And after they get down to a certain depth, they fill it with that mud. Then, when they are ready, they give you a warning so that you go and take shelter. Three, four, five places start to blast. Big rocks going up in the air. What happens sometimes, somebody make a mistake and touch the, the wire. And that guy is gone up to. It happened a Sunday morning when the pay car was there paying men. Pay car and all was in the, in the, in the explosion. And a couple of hundred men in that, a couple of hundred men. That you see bits of men here and the head yonder and all oh, those picking it up for days. Boy, that wasn't, that wasn't an easy day, I tell you. Sunday morning. My grandfather told me, the guys that go up front with the dynamite, that they will leave with their buddies, uh, their belongings, because they never know if they're coming back up. It was a, it was a daily situation that Today, this morning, you have breakfast, and somebody on that table having breakfast may not be there for that evening. So it's that type of situation. Now that I am old, and sometimes I sit down there on these things, recollection, you know, and what I went through, 
And the Panama Canal, and I'm still alive. I raised my hands to God. I said, thank God, thank him. Because I could have been, I could have been dead several times. As the weeks went by, the death toll rose. Eventually, Gothels had the railroad tracks extended all the way out to Mount Hope Cemetery so that the bodies could be buried more easily. Meanwhile, with each passing month, the cut at Calabria grew deeper.